You can use the Start Route and Add to Route commands to define routes when electrical components have already been added to your assembly. This is a useful technique in an environment where not every SOLIDWORKS user has access to routing. Such a user can place electrical components from the design library into the assembly, and later, when routing is available, the rest of the route can be defined. Before we go through an example of using this technique, it's important to point out a potential drawback. If you wish to have your electrical components, such as connectors and terminals, inside your route subassembly, be warned that this technique will not accomplish this. When connectors are added to your assembly without creating a route, they will reside at the assembly level, not inside the route subassembly. So if this is a concern for you, use either the drag and drop method discussed earlier, or the from to list method we'll be covering later in the course. Let's go on now and create a route using the start route and add to route commands. Here, I have an assembly. I'd like to add a few electrical connectors, but I don't want to create a route. When I drag in the first three pin female connector from the design library, SOLIDWORKS will prompt me to create a new route subassembly. Since I don't want to do this, I'll click Cancel to dismiss the Start Route window. There are a few reasons SOLIDWORKS automatically wants to create a new route. First of all, I have the routing add-in enabled. This, coupled with the fact that the component I'm dragging in from the design library contains a C-point, making it an electrical component, triggers the creation of a new route. Once you're done placing components, and this is about as far as you can take your route design if you don't have routing available. If you're the one tasked with taking this route to completion, this is where your task might begin. Before I can begin a new route, I have to reveal the connection points, or C points, that make these components electrical connectors. Now I can do this from the View drop-down menu by selecting Routing Points. If you have difficulty getting your C points to show, try rebuilding your assembly or locating a C-point in the Feature Manager tree by right-clicking on it and selecting Show. Once the C-points are visible, you can use them to start a route. To do this, right-click on a C-point and select Start Route. Next, you'll see the Route Properties Property Manager. Again, I'll accept the defaults and click OK. You can see a new route subassembly has been added in the Feature Manager tree. The connector used to start the route is automatically considered part of the assembly. The other connectors, however, are not. To include them in this route, it's necessary to right-click each one and select Add to Route. Without doing this, they're simply components just like any other component in the assembly. You'll know the component's been added to the route because a small stub of wire will appear. Notice that although all three connectors are part of the route, you can see in the Feature Manager that they don't appear within the route subassembly as we discussed in the beginning of the lesson. With the connectors added to the route, the next step is to define the route path that will connect them. The easiest way to do this is to use the Auto Route tool. You can access this from the Routing Tools toolbar or from the Routing drop-down menu under Routing Tools. With Auto Route enabled, I'll click one of the fan C points, followed by the board C point I wish to connect to. I'll switch to edit mode in the property manager and extend the stub of the board connector to allow more room for the junction. I'll enable auto route again and connect the remaining connector to the board connector. The only step remaining is to add wire information to the route. I'll launch the edit wires command, add four wires to the route, and assign them two to each branch of the route. Note that you can select more than one wire by using the control key on the keyboard. With both wires selected, I'll use Select Path to choose the segments that each set of wires will run along. With wires defined, we can now examine each portion of the route for electrical attributes. As expected, the merged portion indicates four wires, while each of the branches shows only two wires. Also, notice the diameter difference between the branches and the trunk. You can right-click each portion and access Route Properties to get individual diameter information.
I'll exit edit component mode and save the completed route. 